Hello and welcome to another video. This is Jennifer and I hope you're having a good week. Today I am doing a video on the new Hero Arts Metallic Glimmer inks. I've been getting a lot of emails about these new inks and I thought I would share a bunch of techniques that you can do with them. However, along the way, I will mention other products you can use for similar results in case you don't have these inks. So in this, we'll talk about stamping with them, painting, watercoloring, resist, all kinds of things. And I have lots of examples for you. Now, I was really exploring with these products as I was filming them. So I thought it was best to just show you the techniques first, then we'll come back and turn everything into cards. So I'm going to focus mostly on those techniques, just so you can get the most out of these products. Let's start by taking a closer look at the inks themselves. These are the eight colors of Hero Art's Glimmer Metallic inks. These are little glass bottles with an eyedropper, and you want to either shake or stir them well before you use them. They are sold in packs of two, so like the silver and gold are sold together, the purple and blue, and so on. Now these are pigment-based inks. They're acid-free, archival, fade-resistant, permanent, and fast-drying. But what is great about these inks, and which really makes them unique from other things that I've ever remembered using in the past, is that they give beautiful me metallic results, either on their own or when mixed with water. And because they're pigment-based, they're great for a lot of different techniques. Now here's a closer look at each of the colors. I'm just going to use my finger to kind of spread them out so you can see the color. And you'll see that there are beautiful Christmas colors is I think what they were really going for. But in the end, they really have all the colors in the rainbow and you can mix these. Now, as I mentioned, you can use them with water or without water. If you want it to be really intense, use less water. If you want it to be softer, use more water. And you'll end up with that metallic shine every time. Now there are metallic watercolors out there. The advantage of these is that they can be used without the water to get different results. So you can see the really intense shine that you get. So let's start doing some techniques. Let's start with backgrounds first. These are great for quick backgrounds that result in a shimmer effect. So first, the easiest thing, if you want to create a background with this metallic shine, you can completely cover it with these inks. I put a little bit on my work surface. This is a glass mat. I sprayed a tiny bit of water to it, not too much, just a little bit, just to help you cover the surface a little bit better. And I just brush it right on there. Before you know it, know it you will have a background covered with the gold shine. You can die cut from this, use this as a background, whatever you want. Very quick to do and it dries very quickly also. If you wanted it to be sheer, you just add more water to it. You could also use any kind of blending tool to blend that along the background, which I'll show you in a moment. Now in this case, I've put some of the blue ink onto my uh, glass mat, added some water next to it so I could pick up some water, and just to show you that you can use this to create watercolor backgrounds. Any kind of watercolor technique that you normally do for backgrounds, you can do with these, but they'll have a shimmer effect to it. If you want heavier color, just pick up more of the color and less of the water. These work great for galaxy backgrounds because the shine is included in it. The shimmer metallic look is included. I also think that by using a little bit of blue and maybe a touch of silver, you could create some beautiful sky backgrounds. Another thing I really like to do with these inks is to put a few drops of colors onto my glass work surface and add some water, then press watercolor paper into it to create fun backgrounds. Now I had leftover blue over here, I put some silver there too, and I'm just pressing watercolor paper into it, and then I'll kind of move the color around a little bit with my heat gun, and I end up with this beautiful background. And we'll make a card from this later. It's just gorgeous, and I found the inks really move nicely and work great for this technique. I look forward to doing more with other colors and experimenting with how much water I use. But if you put drops of this ink on your work surface and you're done using it, instead of wiping it up, do a few backgrounds like this. It's a great way to prevent any of it from going to waste and you'll have some beautiful backgrounds as a result. Now, if you don't have these inks and you want a similar result to this, you could use some Distress Oxide reinkers and add some Perfect Pearl to it, some pigment powder. But this definitely is easy to use for these beautiful backgrounds. We'll come back to cards with these backgrounds after they dry. Another great way to use these Hero Arts Glimmer Metallic inks is for ink blending. 
Here I'm putting a bit of the ink onto an ink blending tool. You don't need as much as I put there, I kind of got carried away. Now I'm not adding any water to these, but you could if you wanted a lighter uh, application of color. But I'm just applying them and blending them together as I would if I were blending inks. In this case, I'm only using these glimmer inks for the blending, but you could use them in uh, like a combination with any kind of distress ink. So maybe have like a red with a little bit of silver over it or blending into a gold ink. In this case, I just kind of blended from the blue to the silver and it makes for a beautiful backdrop for a Christmas card that I'll create. And this really takes very little time to dry and it catches the light perfectly. Okay, you can also use these glimmer metallic paints for basic watercolor of stamped images. So for my example, I'm using this really awesome new background stamp from Hero Arts. This is the Holiday Foliage Background Stamp and it is such a beautiful detail to it. So what I did is I stamped it with black VersaFine ink and added clear embossing powder to it and heat set it. So this is just a background image heat embossed. Now I've put a drop of the green ink onto my work surface and added a little water next to it so I could mix them together. And then I simply paint in the image however I want. Now if you use more water, you can get a more sheer look. If you use less water, you can really make this quite opaque. So I'm kind of going in the middle here. Now this will have a beautiful metallic shine to it when it dries. If you don't have these inks, you could instead paint in with regular watercolor, but add a little bit of Perfect Pearl pigment powder to it to get that shine. I really find wa doing watercolor with these is easy to do, and the color goes on nicely. And again, we'll come back to this card a little bit later. Next, I wanted to show you how these inks work for stamping. I'll be honest, I was doubtful they would work well for stamping, but I was impressed when I did try it. So I'm going to be working on these poinsettias that you see here. This is from a layering stamp set. I'm going to use regular ink for the bottom layers, but the top layers I'll use the metallic ink. So this is the Hero Arts Layering Poinsettia stamp set. Beautiful images and nice sentiments in this one. You can see I've already put it to a lot of use so far. So in my Misty, I'm going to start by stamping the bottom layer. I wanted to stamp three at once, so what I'm doing is I have a piece of square cardstock here, and I'm stamping in each corner. I could have done a fourth corner, but I only needed three flowers. So now each time I only have to line up one of the flowers, stamp it with a slightly darker red ink, and then I just rotate it and it'll be perfectly positioned to stamp the other two flowers too. Now here for the last layer, instead of using ink, I'm using the Glimmer Metallic ink. I put a drop on my work surface and I'm picking some up with a dry brush. I'm not adding any water to this. I'm brushing it evenly over the entire stamp and then I can stamp it right onto my image. And check it out, I have a very crisp image surprisingly and it has that pretty metallic shine to it. So now I can do this to the other two flowers, simply rotating the paper in between. And here's a closer look at the shine that you get with that last layer. Okay, I also used the tiny little image for the center of the flowers and used the gold metallic ink for those. I also wanted tiny little dots of the darker color, so I'm using the other end of my paintbrush. This is a great way to create little metallic dots with a touch of dimension to it anywhere on your project. Now I also wanted to show you that you can do, instead of stamping with the red metallic ink, you could do gold, and it just adds a gold shine to it. Now I know everybody's always looking for a gold metallic ink pad. None of them really stamp opaque, but this does. So if you're looking for gold ink to stamp with, this actually works surprisingly well, and you get a very solid gold look to it, as you can see here. I think it's fun to add this touch of gold to the flower as an alternative. You really could add it to the last layer of any layering stamp set. And keep in mind that this has kind of got some paint-like properties, so it has a little bit of dimension to it if you have a thick amount of the ink, which I think is really fun. Now I will say you can do this with other paints and inks where you can just paint it on and then stamp with it. What I really like about this particular one is besides the shine, the consistency is just right so it covers the stamp nicely and you get a pretty solid result. So there you can see the leaves with the second layer done with the green metallic ink. 
Let's do another example of stamping with the Glimmer Metallic Inks. In this case, I'm doing several layers with the metallic inks. This is the Hero Arts Christmas Tree Layering Stamp Set. This is a great stamp set for getting different looks. You can layer these different dot images onto the tree. You could do them in blues. Well, in this example, I'm going to do greens and then one layer with silver to look like ornaments. Now I'm doing this onto a die cut that I created using the Hero Arts Nesting Ornament Infinity Die Set. This one's really useful because you can cut super large pieces or tiny ones. I think it'd be fun to die cut a bunch of tiny ones and create a background pattern on a card. But in this case, I took one of the medium sized dies and created a die cut for our stamping. Okay, so let's start with the stamping. I'm starting with like the base of the tree, the trunk of the tree with the branches. And I'm using my Misty stamping tool. You don't need to, I just get used to using it and it's very handy. So first I'm painting on the uh, bronze color. And I realized I put so much paint on it that it was kind of in between the stamped image. So I stamped it off on a scrap paper and then stamped it onto my project. That way I got a crisper, cleaner result. Now once that was dry, which happens very quickly, I can go ahead and do my next two layers. The next two layers I did with regular stamping ink. So these are Hero Arts green inks. And then for the layer after that, this time I'm going to paint on with the green metallic ink. So here I'm painting the green onto the image and I'll stamp it right on top. And that way there's some shimmer to it. I'm gonna do another layer with that green. Then the final layer that I'm going to do will be silver. So these will be like ornaments that go on the tree. So this will have lots of shine to it, lots of different shades of green, and it'll create this beautiful layered image. You can see all the shine here. Now I like this look so much that I created another. This time I did all stamping ink, except for the last layer, I used the red metallic ink for the ornaments. So I had those red shiny ornaments and I just love the results. Okay, now before we move on to the cards, I wanted to share some resist ideas with you. I find that these Hero Arts Glimmer Metallic Inks are excellent for many different forms of resist. The first resist technique is the one you see on the background of this card. So again, I'm using the Hero Arts Holiday Foliage Stamp, and I'll get a completely different look out of it this time. I'm inking it up with Versamark ink, and I'll stamp it onto green cardstock. Then I'll add clear embossing powder and heat set it. So you'll get what looks like a darker green raised image on the regular green cardstock. Well, I wanted to give this kind of a gold shimmer. So I put some of the gold metallic ink onto my work surface. I'm adding quite a bit of water with it and mixing that up. So I just have what's kind of like a gold watercolor. I'm next going to paint this over the whole piece. What happens is the embossing resists that watercolor that you're putting on top. And then the gold kind of sits on the cardstock and gives it a fun gold color. Because I watered it down a bit, you can still see the green cardstock from behind it. So you get a really unique result that I really, really like. I dabbed off the extra and then I'm just heat setting it just to make it dry quicker and decided I wanted more gold. So I'm going and putting another layer on. I do find that by adding the water to it, you can allow the color to show through more. So here's a closer look at the final result. It's really cool in real life. I wish you could see it. You've got the green detailed image and then you have like this gold shiny green around it. It's really cool. Okay, here's another example of resist. This time I'm going to do a lot of the same things but not add water. So I clear heat embossed the Hero Arts Floral Tile Stamp onto some pool cardstock, and that's the piece you see on the left. This time I'm using the silver metallic ink and not adding water. I'm using an ink blending tool to apply this over it. This really goes on very, very smooth. Now you could use any kind of inking tool for this. And then once you've covered it completely, you can buff it off, and by using a cloth, a dry cloth, you remove the ink from the embossed areas. You can do something similar like to this with a metallic acrylic paint, but I find this goes on better and look at the shine that you get around all of the embossing. It gives a really neat look in real life. 
Now I like this resist technique so much, I have another example for you. I find this is a great way to get a really unique look out of your background stamps. This time I'm using the Hero Arts figure eight stamp. I was excited to use this one. And I just clear heat embossed on white cardstock. So now again, I'm just using the metallic ink as is with an ink blending tool and just going right over it. You can see the clear embossing resists the ink that we're putting on top. I'll rub off the extra with a dry cloth or you can just use your fingers. It really helps to rub that color in and look at that result. Really a lot of shine and great for a backdrop on a card. Okay, now that we've shared a bunch of techniques for using the Glimmer Metallic Inks, and also I made some suggestions for other products to try, let's go ahead and turn these pieces into cards. I'm going to combine some together and show you some tips along the way. Let's start with this card. The background on this one I created by dragging the watercolor paper through some of the metallic ink and water on my work surface. Created earlier in this video and I really like the results. I'm using the Hero Arts Deer and Ornament die. I like that these two dies can be used together or separately. I will use the ornament die alone to die cut from our Glimmer watercolor piece. I will then use the deer die and the ornament die together to die cut three times from white cardstock. That's the pieces you see there on the left. I'll glue these three white die, white die cuts together for a stacked look and then glue them on the blue ornament. You don't need to stack them, I just really like that look. I then glued the entire thing onto a blue note card and added a silver bow on top and then added some gemstones. You can see the shimmer in the sky. It really is quite beautiful for a night sky. I also added a white heat embossed sentiment that says Merry Christmas and it's from this polar bear greeting stamp set that you see on the right. I'll use this stamp set again in a moment. This card design is excellent for any type of background technique that you may want to try. Here's another one that's kind of similar, uses a similar product, but this is the background that I created earlier by blending the blue and the silver metallic inks together with the ink blending tool. I added a layered white stack die cut ornament, and then I added a Christmas die cut that I covered with the silver metallic ink. This is the ornament die. It has the snowflake piece and the ornament die together. You can cut them apart if you want to use separately. And then I just use glue to tie a little bow on the top. This is the Christmas die cut. And again, I covered that die cut with some of the silver metallic ink. It's excellent for adding a little bit of shimmer to your die cut words. And by the way, I know I'm going through these cards quickly since this is a long video, but I do have photos on my blog, so be sure to check them out there. Now I wanted to add the word happy above Christmas, so I just dug through some of my Hero Art stamps and I found this one. That's one of my favorite things to do, is to dig through old stamps to find new ways to use the sentiments. Okay, now this is the resist background that we created with the silver metallic ink. On this one, I wanted to use the new Holiday Greenery Edge die from Hero Arts. I think this one might be on my favorites list from this year. It can be used for holiday and non-holiday. So when you die cut with this, it cuts like this border strip with a fancy edge. You can see it here. I wanted that border strip to be a little bit bigger so that I can add a sentiment to it. So I'm going to do a little bit of partial die cutting. So I'm placing my die into my uh, die cutting machine and I'll put the top cutting plate halfway onto it. So anything underneath the cutting plate will cut. Anything hanging out of the cutting plate will not. So that edge will not cut over there. So I go ahead and run this through and then I can make the border part as wide as I want now. And then I'll have room for my sentiment. By the way, I'm using my Tim Holtz trimmer for this. People ask about this trimmer. This is my current favorite trimmer. I find it very handy. I like the smaller size one a lot and it cuts beautifully. Okay, so now I've trimmed my background down and I have some leftover piece and I added this all onto a card. I added the sentiment onto it with silver embossing powder and look at that detail that you get. I think this was a perfect little supplement to that fun background and the silvers match nicely. Now the sentiment that I used is from this Hero Arts Winter Messages stamp set, which I think is one that I'll use often. 
There are many different messages on here for Christmas, but many that you can use throughout the year too. I'm a big fan of the word blessed, and I was glad to see it included in the set. I used a similar die for this next example. The background on this one was one of those where I dragged watercolor paper through the glimmer metallic ink and water on my work surface. I added the border die cut edge, and then also some polar bears and a stamp sentiment. This one's actually pretty quick to do, since you really don't have to color the polar bears if you don't want to. Here is the snowflake border die that I used. It's similar to the greenery one that I just used, but it's snowflakes. I used the same trick to make the border a little bit wider on it. And then again, there is the polar bear stamp set. I used a sentiment from it on an earlier card. And the sentiments on here can be used with or without the polar bears. And by the way, there are some cute images you can add to the polar bears to have a little scarf or a little hat. But I decided to keep this one simple. Now my next two cards combine different pieces that I made earlier in this video. Here we have the silver resist background and then the stamped tree that we did with the metallic inks. I also die cut a larger shimmer vellum die cut to go behind our stamped white die cut. And I really like that layered look. Here you can see all the shimmer that we got with that stamping and how crisp the images turned out. Here is another example quite similar where I have that gold resist background on the green cardstock and then the stamped tree in the center. Now remember on this tree, I just used regular inks. Then I used the glimmer metallic ink just for the red ornaments on the tree. Well, to make that shimmer stand out more on those red ornaments, I put a drop of glossy accents on each. So not only does it shimmer, it's got this nice dimension to it also. So you can use these glimmer inks with other uh, mediums that you have like glossy accents. And here you get a better look at the shine that you have on the background of this card. And this is another one of those card designs that can be used in many ways. Okay, my next card has the poinsettias that we created earlier. Remember on this one, I did the first two layers of those poinsettias with stamping ink. Then I did the last layer by stamping with the glimmer metallic inks. So there's shine in the details and a touch of dimension. And remember, I also used the metallic inks for the centers of the flowers. Now the sentiment on here is from this Hero Arts Color Layering Christmas Tree set. I gold heat embossed it. I really like the sentiments in particular on this set. Now for the background, I used the Hero Arts Sugar and Spice stamp. I like background stamps that have tiny prints, like this one. I think it's a nice backdrop. And I just clear embossed it on a piece of craft cardstock and added it to a white note card. I find craft cardstock often looks nice behind bold colored images like these flowers. Now I do have some leftover flowers. Remember the ones that I stamped the gold on top of? I didn't get a chance to use these, but I'll definitely save them. I really like the shine that gold gives. Here we have the piece where I did the watercolor. I wanted to show you what this watercolor looked like when it dried. It's a lot of shimmer to it. I added dots of glossy accents here and there just for a bit of dimension. I cut it at an angle and added it to a white note card. I like to do that design often when I have a bold background like this. I also added a die cut wishes sentiment. Now this die cut wishes is part of a combination set. There's a small stamp set and the word die sold together. I die cut it from some red cardstock and painted over it with the red metallic ink. And then I added that to the top of the card. Adding the shimmer to it draws it in to the shimmery watercolor that we have below. Okay, there you have some ideas for using these inks. I hope it inspires you. If you're interested in the supplies, I always have them in that description below. In the middle are more videos for you to check out. I appreciate you spending time with me. I know my videos are long, so a big shout out to you for sticking with them. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I hope to see you again soon.